All right, so hi guys. It is another hearing traffic in the background, hopefully not too bad <laughs> uh, video. It's uh, also late night Michi voice because inspiration hit and I just wanted to record some audio right now. I really, really, the more and more I'm thinking about it, I'm thinking about investing in one of those like separate microphones that like isn't attached to your computer it's an actual like microphone device thing that you charge and then once you're done you just you know you plug it in and also future me editing this is gonna have so much fun editing out all of my (sighs) breathing because of the fact that I have to talk more quiet and uh hopefully again the background audio is not too bad we're finally finally (laughs) after like nearly oh god it feels like four months It's getting cool again, so we don't have to worry about our air conditioning, but uh, if you're new here, hi, I don't normally sound like this. This is just what happens when I am inspired and impulsed and really, really want to record some audio. Unless you never hear this and I end up re-recording it in the future, and this is just audio that's just lost to the world. Or I might go to my patrons, I'm uh, not sure. But anyway, I was recently, tonight, uh, I was actually swatching some of my watercolors because I got myself some new watercolors and I was just thinking and you know my mind tends to wander when I don't really listen to things or if I'm listening to music that doesn't really have like lyrics and stuff and I I started to remember an incident that happened at the the convention I was recently working and how a lot of people have been like, uh, you know, commenting me and emailing me and stuff. And this is over a while. This isn't really recently, but they've but they've they've done it a couple of times where they wanted like an updated pet peeves video. If you guys didn't know, a long time ago, I did a like pet peeves video, and I believe I did a role play one. I'll have to double check if I didn't just put them all in one video. But if it's not in the i card in the corner, I'll try to put it at the end of the video so you guys can uh, you guys can go enjoy those. But uh, something that I'm, <laughs> it's been a long time since I've listened to either of those videos. Like I said, if it isn't even two, I don't even remember if it's two videos or one video that I just, I just went off. But I get really, really mad. <laughs> it's going to sound really weird because I have to be quiet, but I'm actually like, I am irritated because one of the biggest things that gets under my skin and gets under my other artist friend's skin. You know, all of us, that th- this is our job. This is how we pay our bills. This is how we eat. Uh, one of, something that just always, oh, it just, it just, it just digs. It just digs at your skin. And it is, you know, I, it's, it's also why the title might be a little, like, kind of clickbaity. I really didn't intend for it to be clickbaity. I just have no idea how to, like, have it be a small, short, concise title, which, you know, YouTube likes, and people have also told me that they haven't been getting my videos for months, and so that's always fun, but it's pretty much something along the lines of, like, you don't charge enough, or you could charge so much more, or did you know that, you know, you should be selling this for $300, $200, $1,000, Oh my gosh, you should go into no 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 no. Cause see, here's here's the thing with that. There's a lot of people that they say it with good intentions, but it gets to a point where it makes us as the artist feels bad feel bad because you know there have been many times, many many times, even recently, where I've done things that I had I had to lower prices on things that I really, really didn't want to. And it wasn't even that I was making banging profit off of it. It was just like, crap, now I'm barely making even. I'm barely making profit. But if I don't have it charge XYZ, then people just aren't going to buy it because my name isn't that big. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting there, but there are people who, and this is just, you know, in general, and I've talked about this, I've definitely talked about this before, but if someone like, and this, by the way, this is not, <laughs> this is not like to throw shade at anybody. So please don't take it this way. But if someone like Jazza or Bailey J or uh, Kelsey Golden or Lavender Town, if because of how big their following is, because I, I believe they're all in the millions now and I all watch them, I all like their stuff. 
if they were to like open up commissions, they could probably pretty easily open up like two, $300 sketch commissions and they would sell. And it's because they have the name and the following and the recognition behind them. You know, the same thing goes for some really high tier commission artists out there. You know, you see people who on one hand, they'll be like, oh my God, why is this furry artist getting $800 for a yacha when so-and-so is doing digital paintings for $200? And it's like, well, the name's there. It is sad to say that people like taking advantage of us because art is a luxury item. It is not. This is something I've always said. It is not something you need, like you need food. You don't need a picture of your of your character, of your persona, of a fan art, of anything. Like you need a meal in your stomach. I've known people who've done that, but the problem with this saying, with the people who, they go out of their way to, you know, try to make you feel better. But the big problem is, and this is going to sound pretty douchey, but with some people, I mostly, I don't tend to do this to strangers, I mostly do it to people like I know, like family or friends of family that try to do it to like, you know, use me or whatever. And cause that, that happens. If anybody's an artist, you know what I'm talking about. You don't even have to have that high of a skill level. If you're an artist, people, people ask you for shit like all the time, but you know, it's the, oh, so you would buy this. You would buy this for $300. You would buy this for $80. You would buy this for blah, blah, blah. And they nine times out of ten, nine times out of ten. Oh well n- no but that's what you should charge and it's like well you answered my question y- you yourself wouldn't buy it so why are you telling me to sell it for that much in the same vein you also have artists that are very cocky and they are very you know very um the well, moment just say cocky there's no other nice way to say it you're, you're cocky and you know their instance is Oh, well, I can just make it myself. That's not an answer either. (laughs) I've actually had to cut a couple of artists out of my life because they would ask me and my friends and stuff for like commission advice, merch advice, blah, blah, blah advice. And then they would be like, oh, well, that 10 cent button, you know, to get to get made because realistically, real quick with button makers if you buy it wholesale and you buy the button maker it's like 10 cents a part so it's really really cheap but you didn't hear that from me because <laughs> some people get really antsy about it but it's like oh well if I had a button maker I would hello car thank you if you know it's like well if I had a button maker I would sell this two inch button for like ten dollars and it's like well is it a special button would you buy that button for $10? Well, n- no, but somebody would. It's like, yeah, you're right. Somebody, one person might. But if you yourself wouldn't pay the money for it, then why are you selling it at that price? Why would you not want to buy your own art? And this is something I've been saying for years, but it's something that always it just gets under my skin. Oh. Is the people who, they, they do it because they do it to like, try to make you feel better but they're not being realistic about it you know I yeah I haven't done many cons but I have had an online store for a while and I have done things here and there and I've seen things and I've been a consumer myself and this is something I definitely brought up when I was when I did my my San Japan my San Japan my updated San Japan video unless you're watching this way in the future which again I'll hopefully I card it if the I card works it's a long boy but I talk a lot in it so pretty much at one point I believe I talked about how because I flew in I had to lower my prices for things because I was flying back out and whatever I could not take with me you know I had to either shit back to myself or (laughs) hope that I my my luggage didn't overdo again and so what ended up happening was I, I couldn't even take all of my stuff I had to actually leave a lot of stuff with Holly I left I think like all of my prints with Holly and a couple of sketchbooks that didn't sell and she's and um my next paycheck I'm gonna send her money so she can uh ship it to me because I don't think that's right that she'd pay for the shipping so you know but like those are things that people have to take, take into account which is why a lot of people tend to do local cons because you don't have to do that at my con in January you know in the one that I got into because it's so close to me I'm probably not gonna do a sale because it's also only a two-day con 
You know, I'm not as, it sounds bad to say, I'm not as desperate to sell stuff at this con. I hope I sell stuff and I want to make sure I get my table back, <laughs> you know, just like everybody does. But it, it's one of those things where you have to think, it's like, oh crap, if I don't do a lot of cons or if I'm really banking on this or if, you know, I travel and nothing is selling or, you know, some things are selling and some things aren't. I need to think back on my prices. I need to, I need to do this. And then when people are like, well, you don't need to do this. It's like, well, you know what? Not everybody is really well off. Not everybody can take the loss. There's a couple of artists I've actually lost a lot of respect for. Um, again, not going to say who, no tea, no shade, but they've admitted that they like, like they like investing in online stores and they like investing in cons and they like investing in, uh, you know, uh, doing commissions and other stuff and a lot of freelance stuff and because they have another source of income that has nothing to do with their art you know if it flops and they're in the negative they don't care and they treat it like well you know I just do it for fun which is good for them but they should explain you know very clearly that their livelihood doesn't depend on this there are a lot of people who art is their only means of making money. <laughs> there are people out there, you know, where maybe, uh, maybe, uh, per I'll just, again, I'll just use me as an example. Uh, back where we used to live, there was nothing, nothing in this, in that town, nothing within walking distance, nothing within, you know, really driving distance that I could afford. Cause there were times where I, I worked out there and I would be doing the math and I'd have to quit because I would be driving 30 to 40 minutes one way because there was nothing in the town and I wasn't even making enough money to afford gas to go to the job, <laughs> you know? And so I had to just buckle down and, and work my ass off. And for the longest time, you know, I was working a full-time job for minimum wage pay. That just That's just how it was, you know? And that's how a lot of things are for a long time. There are people who they need this which also it makes it so it scares us to you know try new things to invest in things because you hear these people and especially like again I'm using myself as an example you know because this is something I've learned I like learning through time and you know reflecting on it and telling you guys so that way hopefully you know a future little me out there won't make the same goddamn mistakes I did because I made a lot of mistakes um like, I had people who would tell me, like, oh, yeah, buy a lot of this thing, and then you can sell it for, like, $10, and, and I'd be, then, you know, little me with stars in our eyes would be like, oh, I can do that, and then I would end up, you know, I would end up being literally flat broke at the end of every month because all of my money was going to merchandise and the things that I was trying to, like, just hope would do, and then it's like, yay, I made profit, but now I'm still sitting on all this stuff, so I, I didn't end up making as much profit as I thought I would, and then people are like, well, don't do sales, don't do this, don't lower your prices, it makes the rest of us look bad, and it's like, well, maybe I don't have a name like you do, maybe I don't get to go to as many cons or get as many orders in my store as you do, you know, maybe I can't afford to do it, and that is a big issue. And and then when you hear, when you just, when you hear those people who come by and they never buy anything either, at least from what I've noticed, they, 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 they tend to say it, but they never buy anything. Everyone in my life who's pretty much ever said the whole, like, you should raise your prices, nah, 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 they have never commissioned me. They have never bought my merch. They have never gotten any of the art books I've done. They have never... Yeah, no, pretty much that, that that's exactly it. Like, they've never supported me financially in any single way. Not that my friends or my family have any, you know, reason to do that. They don't have to support me in any way. But it's one of those things where it's like, well, you know who I'm, I'm going to listen to? I'm going to listen to the people who do commission me, who do buy my stuff, who my friends who've been doing this for a long time because they've been doing it a long time. And getting the snarky comments of the of the people just giving empty words. That's, that's the bottom line is it's empty words. It's an empty promise. It's, you know, it's because I, a long time ago when I had a lot more friends, um, I had a lot more art friends and I would have these art friends who th their stuff was very good. Very, very good. It was very high quality stuff. To me, it was um, industry level. Like it, 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 it was really, really well. And what would end up happening is 
they would have industry prices for their stuff. And they would always, always, they would bitch and moan to me and my friends who were getting a lot of commissions like, why am I not getting anything? What am I doing wrong? You get commissions. You get sales. You need a name. And it's like, well, mm, I don't charge $300 for something. Well, that's the industry price. I understand that. But again, people in the industry don't usually take commissions. They don't usually do freelance in that aspect. They tend to do freelance in the industry. You know, the couple of freelance jobs I can say, which I can, I can now say because it freaking fell apart. And <laughs> yeah, I signed an NDA, so I can't like say what it was, was I worked on a lot of assets for an app game that's never going to happen. And yeah, I got, I, I definitely got paid way under industry prices for that because I'm not in the industry and I'm not a big name. It was more than my normal commission prices and it was a fair t- thing at the time and I needed the money. But now, because I had to sign a contract and I even checked it with my lawyer, I can never post that stuff publicly online because the person who I did the NDA with now owns the copyright to everything I did, which is very common in the industry. That'll happen. Sometimes you will work on something and put all your work into something and you can never publicly show it or you can never do that and that. And does it suck? Yeah. Did I learn from it? Oh boy. Yeah, 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 I did. And that's another thing is, you know, you're always learning, you're always evolving and you're always changing. But it's things like that where it's like, yeah, you know what? If I was a bigger person, I could have offered to charge more. The same thing goes for sponsorships. You know, the same thing goes for giveaways and things like that is when you have a bigger name, when you have a bigger platform, you can have a bigger price tag. But the problem is the people who do it, who don't have that they get disheartened, they get upset, and then you get to the point where you're not even making enough money to live. And that's a big thing I have an issue with. I, I, I One of my biggest, biggest irritations is the starving artist stereotype. It does happen. It happens a lot. But you know what? It doesn't have to happen. It doesn't have to happen because people need to understand that art is a luxury item. And it sucks. And sometimes you got to bite the bullet. You, you got to do it. You got to lower your stuff. And I've seen people try to debate the whole high car again. I've seen people try to debate it again and again, where it's like, well, if you lower your prices, it makes the rest of us look bad. And then it's like, okay, well, you know what? Not everybody has 300,000 followers on Instagram. Not everyone has 25,000 followers on Twitter. Not everybody has, you know, triple X things on DeviantArt. You know, they're in the multiple 100K, almost to a million on YouTube. Not everybody has that. In fact, the number is a lot, lot smaller than people think of the really, really big guys, especially in something as small as like art YouTube. It's why you're also seeing a lot of artists, you know, now they're switching their things to other topics, you know, (laughs) because the money is just not really there in some cases, which is fine. But I'm sure, I'm sure even they get the people who are like, oh, you could charge so much more, or ah, uh, you can ask for so much more, or ah, uh, and then I like to say back, I like to say, so you would pay for this? So you would pay that price? See the look on their face. See how they react to the switch, because most of them are not expecting it. And that, guys, is my number one pet peeve, and it has been my pet peeve as an artist for, I'd have to say, at least 12 years, if not longer. <laughs> Because I've been an artist most of my life, but definitely since high school, which, you know, was a while ago for me. So I hope you guys enjoyed my late night rambling rant where I had to be quiet and civil and hopefully the background audio is not too bad. If it's really bad, uh, well, my editing kind of sucks. I'm still learning. So I'll do my best uh, unless you guys never hear it. So but if you guys do hear it and you enjoyed uh Just so you guys know, I make videos every Wednesday, and as always, I will. See you next time. Bye!